Hi, this is Kevin. Welcome to my tutorial for how to create your first PyCharm project that includes a Jupyter notebook. And uh, this video is going to address both working on Windows and working on Mac OS. So we're going to begin by kind of switching back and forth a little bit, but we're going to settle down to uh, dealing with just a single version pretty quickly. So uh, let's think about how we do that on Windows, okay? Um, in our last uh, tutorial, we, we, uh, we created the virtual environment that we're going to use. And I'm firing up in a kind of navigator just so we can remind ourselves about where that is, okay? So... There's Anna kind of navigator. I'm going to go to environments. And uh, I've got this E for Jupyter notebook assignment. Uh, I can't read the whole thing, but that's it. And when I click on that, I'm going to look down here and I'm going to look for um, the uh, file path where this virtual environment is stored. So I'm going to click on it. And there it is, C users, trainer one, Anaconda three, ENVs. Okay, all right, so we know that. So let's, um, I shrunk the wrong thing. <laughs> so uh, let me come back and uh, unshrink it. There it is. So I wanted to shrink this window, not my whole virtual machine area. Minimize that. Okay, so let's start up uh, PyCharm. And I've got the most recent version of PyCharm. And this is an old project. That's not the one we want. So we're going to click on a file, uh, new project. Okay. And um, I'm just going to call this uh, project um, my first um, PyCharm project with uh, Jupyter Notebook. Okay. You can call it whatever. Okay, so we're going to click on create. Okay, and uh, do we want to open it in a new window or this? Well, uh, this one will do fine. And it created it. And I probably could have uh, picked the right virtual environment right there if I had paid attention to all the little bits of the dialogue. But let's just say I didn't, okay? All right, so let's go hook this thing up with the right um, virtual env. Okay, so we're going to go up to the menu, uh, click on File, uh, Settings. Uh, that's going to uh, pop up the Settings uh, dialogue. We want to go down and find the section for a project. And then we want to click Python interpreter. And um, what's well, using a Python 3.8, but not the virtual environment that we want. OK, so let's go all the way to the right side of that uh, window where we select the virtual environment and click on the gear icon and uh, choose add. Okay, uh, so we want to add a virtual environment, uh, but we want the conda variety. So that's option uh, two, a conda environment. And we don't want to create a new one, although it's uh, possible to uh, create them right here within uh, PyCharm uh, using a conda, but we're going to uh, we're going to select the, the lower radio button for existing environment. 
okay we've not used this one before so if we if we choose the drop down uh we're not going to see oh this is interesting it actually says e for jupiter notebook assignment okay that looks interesting but let's go looking for it okay so let's uh click on the dot 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 okay and uh, we can see that we have uh, uh, users and then trainer one okay and then we have an anaconda three right uh, and then we have ends okay let's look at this uh, here's E4 Jupiter notebook assignment. Let's open that. Okay. And um, when we're doing this in um, Windows, okay, uh, under our virtual environment, there's just down at the bottom of that directory there's a python exe so we highlight that and we click ok okay and that's going to give us a a, uh, a connection to the interpreter that we want to use that's in the proper virtual env okay and there we can see it we can say it's it's a Python, a Python 3.8 interpreter, and it's in the virtual environment E for Jupyter Notebook assignment. And then I can click OK. All right, so that's how we do it in Windows. How would I do this on the Mac? Well, let me pull off my virtual machine and show you how I, uh, I do it on the Mac. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to open anaconda navigator on the mac and as usual it takes a little while to warm up but it's going to be up here in a second there it is and i'm going to go to environments and this middle panel has what i'm looking for and um here it is, E4 Jupiter Notebook Assignment. It's the beginning of that. So we're going to look down here to see where, um, see the path. It's, it's going to help us uh, get to the virtual environments. So again, we're going to click on this. And there it comes up. Users, it, it, Trainer 1, Opt Anaconda 3 Ends. Okay. So that's where we're going to be looking. Okay, good. So let's uh, crank up PyCharm. And PyCharm on the Mac, uh, pretty much the same. Looks a little different. Okay. And um, I'm going to say I want a new uh, project. Okay, and so now we can... Uh, back up with the project uh, name, and I'm just going to call this uh, my first PyCharm project with Jupyter Notebook. Okay. Now, um, again, I can, if I want to, I can go in this little, uh, I can click on the triangle and I, I can try to go through the uh, dialogue for how to pick an interpreter for a new uh, project. Well, we could have done that for Windows uh, too. Yeah, so let's just uh, do it this uh, way. So um, let's see, previously configured interpreter. You know what? I like the other version uh, more. 
So I'm just going to, I'm not going to use this. Okay. Uh, I'm going to click on uh, create. So it's going to create the project. Okay. And it's coming up on my other monitor. Let me pull it over. There it is. And here's my new project. Uh, so here uh, on the Mac, I'm going to go up to the menu and click on uh, PyCharm uh, Preferences. Okay, and then I'm going to go down the left uh, panel and open the one for a project. I click on Python Interpreter. And pretty much it's going to look like the same thing. So if it wants to use uh, Python uh, 2.7, that's a disaster. So let's go over to the right and click on the gear icon and choose add. And we're going to get into the same uh, dialog uh, box that we saw on Windows. So in the left uh, panel, we want a Conda environment. OK, and then towards the middle, we want the lower of the radio buttons, existing environment. And then in the interpreter, Again, if we take the drop down, I don't know that we're going to see the one that we want. Um, uh, oh, it's SAE for Jupyter Notebook Assignment. So it, it, it turns out to be there, but let's assume it's not there. OK, how would we go looking for it? Well, we would uh, we click the dot 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 icon. OK, and um, where is it going to point us to? Well, we've picked one of these before. OK, and here's the one I did for a test. But where are we? OK, we're, we're exactly where uh, we thought we we're going to be. We're, we're in the trainer one uh, uh, directory. That's my user uh, directory on the Mac. OK. And in this case, we're in the sub uh, directory opt. OK, and then under that, we're in Anaconda 3. And then under that, we're in ENVS. OK, and then we have to find the, uh, the end that we want. Uh, e for Jupyter Notebook Assignment, open that. OK, and now this is a little different between Windows and the Mac. Uh, on the Mac, uh, we get into a further sub directory. We open bin. And under that, we look for Python. And that's going to be under P. And where is Python? We went plain old Python right there. We're going to click on OK. OK. Oh, and um, that's something else that we want to do. We, we should have done this on Windows uh, 2. Uh, we can click uh, on, the, on the checkbox for Make Available to All Projects. And then we click on OK. And we come back and we can see that the Python interpreter is Python 3.8 uh, within uh, the virtual environment, E for Jupyter Notebook Assignment, and we're going to click OK. All right, and that's that. OK, so I'm going to do the rest of this on the Mac. Uh, I can't imagine that it's going to be uh, different. So um, I would ask you to um, work with me on this. And uh, so here's uh, something. What's, what's our point of view in this uh, course about Jupyter Notebooks? Um, well, that we could use them, and we could use them particularly well if we could maybe include some code from a PyCharm from a, uh, from a PyCharm uh, project uh, in the notebook. Right, so we're going to use uh, PyCharm and uh, Jupyter, and we're going to use them together. All right, that's going to be our kind of special point of view, and we think that we can drive a lot of value that way. All right, so um, 
uh, you know, for years and years, you could create a new uh, Python project in PyCharm. You didn't get this goofy main.py. Uh, now it, it, it generates that for free, which I think is a silly idea. So I'm going to uh, delete that, which is what I uh, typically do. Okay, so uh, because we're using um, uh, Jupyter uh, with this uh, 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 project, when we say we want a new file, one of the things we can pick is we want a new Jupyter notebook. So let's do this. Let's highlight the project name, right click, and let's say new. Okay, and then right under Python file, Jupyter Notebook. Okay, and we can give it a name. Okay, and I'm just going to call this uh, my uh, second uh, Jupyter with a Y notebook. Okay, and enter. And I've got version control on, so it's going to ask me about that. You probably don't, so you probably won't see this. And um, what is kind of interesting here is it has opened the file, and it's opened it up in a, uh, uh, we're seeing some, some unusual uh, things. One is we're seeing this uh, this uh, panel here on the left, and this uh, panel on the left is is the code for the notebook, okay? And the panel on the, on the right is is the preview pane for the notebook. Um, now, do you always get a two-panel version of this? Uh, no, you don't. If you come up here to the right-hand side. Uh, uh, you can see that we have this, uh, uh, we've, we've activated, we've activated the icon for editor and preview. That's the one we're in. Okay. Every time we click that, it'll toggle between side by side. So, uh, in the side-by-side, -side. the cells of the notebook are in the left uh, panel and the previews in the right. And if we click it again, the cells of the notebook are in the top uh, panel and the previews on the bottom. Okay. Now, there are, I don't think there are a lot of people who use these things uh, in directly in uh, PyCharm. And I've got to tell you, I don't really use them uh, directly in PyCharm a lot, but it can be done. Okay. And um, so let's just see if we can uh, create a couple of simple cells like we did in the last uh, tutorial. So we're just going to click on line th uh, Well, we're going to click on line two, I guess. I thought I was clicking on line three. Uh, and let's um, let's put in some Python. So let's say print and um, uh, apostrophes uh, goodbye, comma, cruel world, uh, period. Okay, so we've got that. All right. And okay, so that's that's a code cell. All right. And how do we execute that? Well, the same way we do if we were in a proper notebook, uh, we press uh, shift and enter. And um, it uh, does a couple of things. Okay. Uh, one, it started, um, it started the Jupyter server for us. Okay, that's pretty nice. Now, how does it know how to do that? Well, uh, because of the virtual environment that we've given it, it has access to all the packages it needs to start the virtual server, and it uh, did it. Now, how can we see the details on the virtual server? Well, it's in this uh, lower uh, panel here, okay? If we go to the left one, server, 
my first PyCharm project with Jupyter Notebook, uh, we'll see that this looks a lot like um, the um, it, in Windows, it looks like uh, what would be the command line window, and in, on the Mac, it would look like what would be in the terminal. Okay, and you can see that it started up the server. Um, you can see that we've got these URLs if we want to open it in a browser. And let's just do that. Okay, so let's take the URL, okay, and copy it. And let's just open up uh, Chrome, okay, and uh, paste it into Chrome. And you can see that uh, here we're, we're at the main uh, tab for uh, Jupyter. And now we can see our notebook. So we'll click on that. And it opens it up. And there it is right there. Okay. Now we can't see the output. Oh, yeah. If I, I clicked on the dot, 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 and we could see the output. So that's pretty good. Okay. So... Um, you can create a notebook uh, in uh, PyCharm. You can make it under your uh, project and you can work on it in uh, PyCharm using, uh, you know, the editor there. And again, uh, there are two versions of the view. There's the one where uh, uh, you kind of have the source code at the top and the uh, the more uh, graphical version at the bottom. Or if you click over here at Editor and uh, Preview, uh, you can get the side-by-side -side version. Okay. Uh, now, I have had... Uh, um, I have had some uh, situations where I've tried to work in PyCharm and I've tried to work in uh, Jupyter in, uh, you know, the browser and uh, kind of do it at the same time. And as you, you would expect, uh, one or the other of, you, of them will warn you um, that you've... Uh, you know, you've changed the document. Do you want to update it? Update it? Do you want to reload it? Uh, that kind of stuff. I don't recommend that you try to go back and forth. Okay. What I typically do is just work uh, in the browser. Okay. Um, you could decide that you're going to work in uh, PyCharm. Now, how how are they different? I can tell you that. If you're working in PyCharm, you get all the benefits of like auto completion and those things that are a little bit weak in the browser uh, version. Okay, so you're going to figure it out. You're going to pick your uh, pattern for using these uh, tools and it won't be long before you're better than me. Okay. All right. So let's uh, come back here. So we've got a goodbye cruel world. Okay. Um, the other thing that we want to do is we want to have a uh, markdown uh, cell, right? And we want to uh, we want to begin with the pound sign and have a space and say uh, this is a markdown uh, title. And again, if we want to execute that, shift, enter. And there we go. All right. So uh, we've shown that we can we can use these two together. How can we begin to drive some value? OK. So here's what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to start to show you uh, the way that I think we should set up these um, notebooks, okay? And I'm going to show you, I'm going to give you really simple examples of uh, some uh, Python code that we could create in the PyCharm project and then 
um, pull it into and use it um, in the notebook. Okay, so let's do the following thing. Let's get rid of our cell goodbye cruel world. Okay, and let's go up to the menu and go to cell and um, I forget how to delete a cell. Oh, let's just do this. I bet this uh, 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 cut will work. So if we uh, if we cut it, it's gone. So now we've just got the markdown. All right. So um, it's probably typical that we want to begin with some kind of a title. OK, so instead of this as a markdown title, uh, let's decide that we're going to we're going to uh, change this. Now, we can double click in this. Uh, if we double click in, in this, we can get back to the code that's underlying um, that uh, text. We get back to the markdown text. OK, and let's instead of that, let's say that this is a, a demonstration uh, notebook uh, for using uh, Jupyter uh, with uh, PyCharm. Okay, so uh, it's a good practice to always have some kind of uh, some kind of a uh, title. Okay, and again, we're going to do uh, Shift Enter. All right, that's good. And what it typically does is, uh, if we use up the last of the cells, it typically gives us a new cell. OK. Now, do we want to go to code, or do we want to um, do we want to have some more uh, documentation? Well, if you read through the readings uh, that I have for the for the current week here in the fall of uh, 2021. Uh, We're going to pull this back. Um, we've got a paper uh, by uh, Rule et al. from 2019. And let's click on this. Ten simple rules for writing and sharing computational analyses in Jupyter Notebooks. OK, now, are we doing computational an analyses? Uh, no, we're not really doing uh, data science uh, just yet. Um, but uh, these are really good rules, OK? And if we go through them, uh, the first one, uh, the tell a story for an audience, uh, OK, well, you know, what's the story that we're telling? Well, it's a demonstration. Uh, document the process, not just the results. OK, that's good. Uh, use cell divisions to make steps clear. Modularize your code. We're going to be doing that. Record dependencies. OK, so the first thing that we should do is especially if we're going to be sharing this with our coworkers, they have to know how to create a virtual environment to run this notebook should we share it with them. OK, so uh, it typically one of the first things that we document is uh, what's in the virtual environment that you need to run this um, notebook. OK. So uh, let's get some more markdown. OK. And uh, OK, so if we want a smaller a title than than a, uh, you know, the one we have uh, up uh, top here uh, is the equivalent of an HTML H1. Why don't we, if we want the equivalent of and HTML, uh, let's say H3. Well, we just put three of these uh, here. OK. And um, let's just put uh, dependencies right here. OK. 
And then let's, uh, if you want to have some text, you write some text. Okay. Okay. And so um, uh, we would say something like uh, this uh, notebook uh, uses a, an anaconda virtual environment environment uh, meant that includes uh, Python 3.8 uh, and um, Jupyter. Okay, and we might have something here about the the version of uh, Jupiter, uh, something like that. The other thing that we could do here is we could maybe point to a uh, requirements uh, dot text uh, file. Uh, these are these are files that have uh, lists of. Uh, uh, packages that uh, some people to use uh, to build a virtual environment. That's sort of above our pay grade at this point in the course. So we're not going to do that. Uh, okay, so now, uh, again, we're going to execute this with an enter, uh, with a shift enter. Okay, so we've uh, documented the name of the um, uh, 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 we've documented uh, uh, kind of a title. We've uh, documented the uh, dependencies. And now what I want to do, I want to show you a couple of things uh, that we want to do, okay? Um, because we have an Anaconda project, okay, uh, we are able to create a code in that project that we can import into here and get the, and, and and get that done. Okay, so how do we want to do that? Well, let's bring over our uh, PyCharm. Okay, and that's the Windows version of PyCharm. We don't want that. Okay, there it was it was underneath. Okay, so let's let's uh, let's create a module that's going to hold some common functions, which we can import that module and use the common uh, functions. Okay, let's do this. So we're going to add it to the project, highlight the project, right click, new, uh, Python file. Okay. What do we what do we typically call a a uh, module file in our uh, class? Well, the convention that I use is uh, just for the class. I usually begin with the word my, okay, and I'm going to call this uh, my uh, Jupyter notebook helpers, okay. Now. Um, would you and your coworkers have a, a a better and more effective way to name uh, common modules that you would share around? Yeah, you probably uh, probably would. Okay, but that's just the scheme I'm using for the class. So, and then I'm going to put a comment in the top. Uh, I'm going to put the name of the file, my Jupiter uh, Jupiter. Uh, notebook uh, helpers dot pi and I'm going to have a, a comment um, a library module uh, that includes uh, helper functions used in uh, demo project. Okay. All right. So what's the first helper function that we're going to write? Okay. Uh, let's 
create something pretty uh, simple. Okay, uh, let's uh, create a function called um, uh, print multiple times. Okay, so plain old function def print multiple times. Okay, and we're going to pass it uh, two parameters. Uh, text to print uh, uh, number of uh, times. Okay, and of course this is a function header, so it should have a a colon uh, to end it. So uh, let's have a for loop for i. Uh, in uh, range uh, number of times. Okay. Uh, print text to print. That's it. It's that simple. Okay. So how would I use that in my notebook? Well, pretty easy to do. The first thing I'm going to need is I'm going to need to import uh, this library and function. Okay, if I wanted to import the whole library, I would have said uh, import uh, my Jupyter notebook helpers. Okay, so I could say import my Jupyter notebook helpers okay now you'll note that we didn't get autocomplete there okay wasn't uh, and so now uh, because of the fact that we have this open in two uh, different um, two different products it's going to ask us do we want to overwrite that file and I'm going to say yes overwrite Okay, now let's go take a peek. Okay, if we go back to my second Jupyter Notebook, uh, there it is, there's the import. Okay, so if you have the notebook open, uh, both in PyCharm and in uh, uh, the browser, you're gonna get uh, either one or the other sort of asking you to allow it to uh, uh, type over each other. Okay, do I want to import everything? Well, it doesn't really matter now because I've only got one function. Uh, but what usually so what we usually do is we usually use the form from uh, name of uh, 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 the module um, space import name of the function and what we call the function we called it print multiple times right so where is that it's right here okay so we can say uh, print uh, multiple times all right, good. Uh, so now we can use it. All right. Now I've got to say what some people do is they'll they'll put all their imports in one the cell high up in, in the notebook. Uh, that's not the style that I'm currently using, but it's the style that some people use. Uh, you know, you're you're kind of used to probably the style that we use in our uh, Python files that we we tend to put all the inputs uh, all the imports at the top um, I think that you could do that um, I'm good I'm going to show you an alternative uh, kind of style so what I'm going to do is I'm going to import each of these just before I use them the first time in the notebook so now that I've uh, 
I've done this. Let me uh, call uh, call the function. So as soon as you've imported it, you can use it. So let's say print multiple times. Uh, and let's uh, let's print the the classic the quick uh, brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Okay, very good. Uh, and it wants to overwrite again. Okay, and we also need a second parameter to tell it the number of times. So let's just do it at 10 times. All right, so we have the code in the cell. If we want to execute it, shift enter. There it is. Okay, so um, although when you see uh, tutorials about uh, notebooks, you'll see a lot of uh, a lot of uh, Python that they type in. Uh, they type in all their Python. Okay, um, and it turns out that uh, uh, Python, once you get into a notebook, is oh a little bit hard to test it's a little bit hard to do version control on um, it's a little bit hard to do a lot for so this this uh, kind of approach that I'm showing you is uh, keep as much of your Python in a plain old uh, Python um, modules um, and call the functions right so any kind of helper function that you might need, okay, instead of coding it in your notebook, uh, code it back here um, in your PyCharm project, okay, uh, import that uh, file and, um, and uh, pick the function or functions that you want to use. If you wanted to use three of them, you could say first, comma, second, comma, third, comma, fourth. Okay. Uh, and then uh, you just uh, call the function. It's that easy. Okay. So we can think of all kinds of helper functions that we might want to code. And I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, what other kind of code might we want to bring um, might we want to uh, develop in uh, PyCharm and then uh, use in the notebook? Well, let me show you another thing that we could do. Uh, let's create another uh, Python file, new uh, Python, okay? And um, uh, let's, oh, before we do that, uh, we're going to have the, it work with some data. Okay, so um, one of the nice things that you can do uh, with your uh, project is you could create a sub uh, directory to keep your data. Uh, okay, so we've got the um, we've got the notebook um, in the in the uh, PyCharm uh, project. Okay. We have the uh, we have the library uh, module in the project. We can also keep the data there. So let's go up to the name of the project. Right click, say new directory. Okay, and let's just call it data. Okay, and now you can see that uh, there. So let's create a data file. Okay. All right. Let's do that. Uh, let's create a new uh, file. Okay, that's going to give us a plain old file. Okay, and let's call it, um, oh, let's call it um, test integer uh, data dot uh, text. Okay, and it's all this. So let's say that we're going to have one integer per line, uh, one, uh, two, 44, 
minus 5, 0, 0, 4, 8, uh, minus 11, 99. Let's have 10, uh, 10 records altogether. Uh, 88 minus 44. Okay. And that's it. Okay. And again, if we're going to have 10 records, okay, um, let's, uh, if we put a, a carriage return uh, at the end of line 10, it'll look like we have a line 11, but there's nothing on it. That's how we typically uh, do that. Okay. And so that's going to be uh, saved. All right. So that looks pretty good. All right. So, um, so we've got that data. All right. Let's create a simple uh, program that processes uh, that. Okay. So, uh, how would we have done that in our course uh, so far? Well, we'd highlight the name of the project. Uh, right click. We want a new uh, Python file. Okay. And let's call it uh, uh, something like this. Uh, print and add integers. Okay. All right. That's good. Okay. We don't need to add the uh, dot pi. Okay. Now here's what we're going to do. We're going to, we're going to explore a design that we haven't really used so far in the class that I think is particularly helpful if you want to be able to run uh, uh, kind of whole programs from your notebook. Okay. Uh, and it's going to look like this. Uh, let's just put a, a comment up first and uh, we'll uh, print and add integers. Okay, dot pi. Okay. Uh, okay. And what's going to say simple program that can be run um, uh, on its own uh, or called from uh, a Jupyter Notebook. Okay. So, in this kind of approach, all right, if we run it all by itself, we're going to run the main. Okay. If we call it from the Jupyter Notebook, well, then we're going to call a function that's inside of it. And what we finally found here is uh, something that I've been talking about all semester long. Um, I keep talking about, I don't have a lot of use for creating uh, programs that we may want to run uh, by themselves uh, sometimes and we may want to we may want to call uh, call some of the functions in them sometimes uh, before now I never got a lot of use for that but I think we have a good use for it here okay so how's this going to look well uh, let's create a, a main okay Def main, okay. Uh, doesn't get any uh, parameters, okay. And what's going to go on in the main? Well, um, uh, let's uh, prompt the user for the input file, okay. Uh, good. Let's uh, say uh, input oh, in file name. gets assigned uh, input uh, please enter the input file name colon space okay that's good uh, and then uh, let's 
um, let's do that. So we're going to prompt for the input file name, and then we're going to call the function that does all the work. Okay. So um, let's see what that's going to be called. And we call the call this print and add integers. So what I want to what I want to do is I want to come up with a standard way to have a a function inside that does essentially all the work of the program uh, and can be called. And one convention that I've seen people do is that they just put the word do in front of it. So let's uh, let's call this a function do underscore uh, print and add integers. Does everybody use this uh, naming uh, convention? Um, I don't think so. Okay, but it's a pretty good one. So it's the one that we're going to use. Okay, so print and add integers. So what does it take as a parameter? Well, uh, the in file name. Okay, it takes that. That's what it takes. All right. So um, let's do an open, right? So we're going to uh, have the variable in, in file that's going to hold a reference to uh, the input file. OK, so uh, we're going to call open, right? And we're going to open uh, in file name. I don't know what happened with my screen there. It wasn't uh, pretty. Apologize for that. So open in file name. Okay. And again, I don't know what's happening there. Uh, I think it's given us some options that I wasn't expecting. So open in file name. Uh, we're going to read. So read. Okay. And we're going to want to set up encoding equals uh, UTF-8. Okay, so that's good. All right. Okay, so uh, it's called print and add integers. So I guess we're going to print them as we read them. Okay, and, th and then we're going to add them up, and we're going to print a uh, total. Okay, so we're going to need a variable to accumulate the total in. Okay, uh, so let's call this uh, uh, accumulator accumulator and initialize it to zero, right? Okay. And uh, we can say this. We can say for line in in file, right? Having a little bit of a trouble with my keyboard here for line in in file. Okay. Okay, so what are we going to do? Well, the only thing on that line should be one integer. Okay. So let's say uh, uh, value uh, gets the sign, uh, let's say int, uh, call int on line, turn it into an in int. Okay. And then let's. Um, what else do we do? Oh, we wanted to uh, print the line, right? So print line. All right, we did that. Uh, we, we turned it into a proper int uh, value. Okay, now we need to accumulate it. So accumulator uh, plus equals uh, value. All right. And we've done that. So that's going to take care of all of those. All right. And now that we're done, OK, now that we're done, what do we want to do? Well, we want to we want to print the uh, total. OK, so let's uh, print. OK, and uh, let's use an F string. OK. And um, 
let's sk skip a line. Let's have one blank line. So how do we skip a line without having to use the separate print? Well, we can use a backslash, uh, backslash n to get us double spacing. Okay. And um, we could say uh, the total of these integer values, these integers is, and then we're going to have a placeholder and we're going to put accumulator there. And we're going to put a period at the end. All right, that looks good. Are we done yet? No. Uh, we need a main. Now, um, uh, let me pause one second. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Uh, it, 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 now, the approach we've taken in most of the course is... Uh, when we get to the end of the file, we just have a call to me. So uh, we type in here, main, print, print. Okay, and let's uh, begin with that. Okay. All right. So uh, I think we're ready to uh, test. So what are we going to test with? Well, we're going to we're going to test with this uh, test integer data, and what does that look like? Well, we've got these ten values. Okay, so let's go back to our program, and let's uh, right click and say we want to run it. Um, and it doesn't like a little of indentation. So what does it not like here? Um, oh, we're off by one space. Okay, <laughs> missed that. Let's run it again. Okay, input file name. Okay, let's give it test integer data uh, dot text. Okay, and uh, we're not getting what I expected. Very interesting. Um, uh, why not? Well, you know what? We never called the function. Oops, I forgot that. Well, let's do it. Uh, let's call it. So let's call uh, do print add integers and let's pass it the file name which in this case is just called in file name all right now i uh i would like to emphasize that the code in the lower level function can't see the variable in file name so let's just give it a different name here Okay, so I'm going to highlight it and say refactor, um, refactor rename, and let's call it, input underscore file name, refactor. Okay, so now uh, that's that. So now we're actually uh, calling the code that does the work. I think that's uh, promising. That's going to work. Okay, let's test it again. Input file name. So that's, uh, again, test integer data. Dot text. And, uh, oh, and so we can't find the file in the uh, directory. Jeez, I'm making all kinds of useful mistakes. Ah, and why is that? Well, because it's in the data directory. Interesting. Okay, now here's what we normally do. 
when we want these things to be, um, when we want to refer to files that are in a sub uh, directory, we just put the name of the directory uh, first. Okay. So, um, what do we want to do with that? Well, let's uh, do the following thing. Uh, let's prompt in file. Uh, uh, oh, let's call it data directory. Let's call it a subdirectory. Subdirectory. Directory. Uh, name. Okay. Uh, equals in this case, it's in a subdirectory called data. All right. I think that looks good. So let's do the following thing. Let's uh, uh, let's not hard code it. Let's uh, prompt for it. Let's say input. Uh, please enter the name of the data subdirectory. Not two C's, directory. Okay, we've got that. Forgot the initial. We forgot the initial apostrophe. Okay, well, that looks good. Okay, so let's pass both of those. So not just input file name. Uh, the first one is going to be, uh, let's just call it data subdirectory. A comma that, so we're going to pass them both. Okay, but now we need to complete, uh, we need to combine those two. Okay. Um, so, um, we're going to call this, uh, complete file name. It's a combination of the path and the, and the, uh, the path and the file name. So complete file name, uh, uh, gets assigned data subdirectory uh concatenate slash I forgot to concatenate it so let's put a plus concatenate a slash okay uh and then let's uh yeah, input a file name okay and then let's open complete file name Okay, well, that looks good. All right, so let's see. We made a lot of uh, changes here all at once, but we're we're promptering for the for the name of the data sub uh, directory, okay, and then the file name, and then uh, we're calling the function that does the work. We're passing the uh, sub uh, directory name and the file name. It combines the two to get a. Uh, a fully uh, uh, qualified uh, uh, file name, okay, and then it opens that fully qualified uh, file name. Okay, I think that looks good. Maybe this will work. Let's see. All right, so now we're going to run it again. Okay, so what's the data subject called? Well, it's called data. Okay, and then what's the um, What's the file call? Well, it's still called test uh, integer data dot text. Um, and it says that we're missing uh, one required positional parameter input file name. Oh, we are. Now look at this. We forgot to add data subdirectory name to the call. My, what a great teaching opportunity we have here. 
And here you folks thought I was a perfect programmer. Well, you can see now that I make all the mistakes that you do. All right, let's hope that works. All right, let's run it again. What's the name of the subdirectory? Data. No, that's not going to work for sure because it's not M data, it's uh, data. So run it again. It's data, D A T A. And the name of the file is test integer data dot text. That ran. Now, here's something that's interesting. Uh, I was expecting to see 1, 2, 44. I was expecting to see all those. Okay. And let's say the total of these integers is 22, 22. Geez, that seems kind of high. <laughs> it's over 2,000. Oh, well, it's because we had a 2048. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Now, why are, in this print line, we're getting a double space? Well, you may remember, okay, uh, that when we print a line that we just got in, we're going to be adding another line feed. We're going to get double line feeds. The way to not uh, print that second line feed is to say that we want line. We want a slice of line. So slices are express, expressed in um, square brackets. Okay, And the expression that gets it rid of the very last uh, character, which is uh, the line feed, is just uh, colon uh, negative one. Okay, so let's run this again. Okay, data. Okay, and what's the final name? Well, it's uh, test integer data dot text. All right, and this is looking better. Why don't we double click on this? So we've got a one, a two, we have all those. Uh, we s skipped a line. The total of these integers is 22, 22. All right, that's good. All right. Now, uh, are we done yet? Well, we're not done quite yet. And I'm going to tell you why. Uh, let's double click on this to get it to go back. Uh, we're going to want to import this into, um, we're going to want to import this into um, um, our notebook. Sorry, I had a brain freeze there. Okay, so do we want to just run it? Okay, I'm thinking today that if we import, um, if we just import this part, uh, that that's not going to work. We do want to, we do want to import the whole. Um, we do want to import the whole program file. Because it could be easily true, if we had a big uh, program, it wouldn't just be in a single uh, function. It might be a function, and it will call other functions, and it will call other functions. So we don't want to say uh, from uh, print and add integers, import to print and add integers, uh, because we're probably not importing enough. So, we'd, so we want to import the whole thing. But we don't want it to run when we import it. We want it to run after we've configured it. So how could we do that? Well, we could do the the classic um, uh, code that we've only used a couple times. Instead of just a call to main, we're going to add the code if dunder name equals dunder main, then call main. So this uh, says, if I'm running this program all by itself, like I do when I run a test of it in uh, PyCharm, 
Well, then uh, call me. If I import it, don't call me. Okay. Well, what's going to happen? Well, we are explicitly going to put this configuration code in our uh, notebook. Okay. So we've changed this. Let's uh, test it again. We've tested it. Okay. So uh, what's the data subdirectory? Uh, data. Okay. What's the name of the file? Test integer data. Integer data. Integer uh, data dot text. And it ran just fine. All right. Now, okay. Um, what we really did is we put the test of this into me. Okay. Now, I finally have a program here that I might want to use two different ways. I might be in PyCharm and I want to just run it. Okay. Or I might be over here in my notebook. Let me find my notebook. Okay. And I want to import it and run it. Okay. So let's look at this. Um, first of all, I have, I have to remember what it's called. It's called print and add integers. So I'm just going to import. Import. Uh, print and add integers. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do that. Now, uh, first I'm going to test, but does it run when I, when I do uh, an import? Let's execute it. Shift, enter. No, it did not. That's good. Okay. Now, we need to configure it, right? Okay, so we're going to have to be able to pass in uh, the data subdirectory name, okay, and the file name. So let's just uh, uh, do this. Okay, we're going to configure it explicitly here in the notebook. Okay, so data subdirectory. Uh, is data okay it's the name of, of the sub uh, directory uh, in the the pycharm uh, project and uh, uh, and then we're going to call an integers uh, file name okay we'll configure that that was supposed to be an assignment okay and what was that called? That was called test integer data dot text. Okay. And now we're going to call uh, the function that we want. Okay. So we're going to call do print and add integers, and then we're going to pass the two values. Okay, so do print and add integers. Okay, and what are we passing in? Well, data subdirectory, you're going to use the names uh, from right here uh, in, the, in the notebook, and integers file name. Okay, that's it. Okay, let's execute that with the shift enter. Okay. Uh, print and add integers. We're going to pause while I fix this. See? I'm giving you the real experience here. Uh, well, I'm back. And um, I, th I, th I think I was about right here. And um, I, I forgot to do a couple things, obviously. And so I got some wrong results. And that's because uh, even though... Um, 
uh, even though this import uh, didn't work the way I thought it, it well I could I, I had problems with my import okay so here's what I want to do okay if you go back and look at my code in the PyCharm uh, project I've got uh, I've got a program called, uh, file called print and add integers.py, okay? And what I want to import and execute from it is this do print and add integers, okay? And, I'll, and when I do the import, I don't want it to run, okay? So that's why I, I've got this if uh, dunder name equals uh, dunder main uh, call to main, okay? Yeah, because we finally found a program uh, we, we kind of wanted to have our cake and eat it too. We wanted to be able to run it, um, uh, run it with the main when we're in uh, PyCharm, and for the most part, that's kind of uh, testing it, okay. And then we wanted to be able to uh, pull it into the notebook, okay. So we want to say uh, from uh, imp, uh, from uh, print and add integers. Uh, import do print and add I I I integers. So that uh, uh, you know, if we uh, called the main, we'd get sort of the interactive test version. Okay, uh, but if we call the do uh, uh, function. Uh, we're going to have to pass it in the data sub uh, directory and the integers uh, final name. And so um, you would think that now because I changed that import that I could run this and I would get a different result. But we're going to try that. We're going to see that doesn't work. Uh, well, it did work. I take that back. Sometimes when you do an import, okay, uh, it doesn't work the way you want it to, okay? If you change an import, okay, you you get the problem that uh, you're still getting the last version of the program, okay? That doesn't, it, it didn't seem to happen to us here. That could be with while I had paused the video, I went out and I did a couple of different versions of this, including the one that you see here. Um, okay, so if you run a program and uh, and then you go and change the import and you, and you run it again, and, and it seems like you're running the old one, here's what you need to do. Uh, you can go up to the menu and click on kernel, okay? And uh, you can uh, click on restart and clear output. So that restarts the, the Python kernel and it clears all the output. Okay. And now we can go up um, and click on cell and then click on run all. Okay. And now that's run the right version for sure. It ran the right version the last time, but I, I think that was uh, somewhat accidental. Okay, so um, it, 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 something we just did is um, something they talk about in that paper that I had you read. Um, build a pipeline, share and explain data. Uh, okay. I think in build a pipeline, they tell us that it's very important for us to uh, run the notebook from beginning to end. Okay, this is a typical uh, best uh, practice that people talk about. It's in here uh, somewhere. Okay, so I, it is entirely possible to get these things uh, run in the wrong order. So it could be possible for uh, us to have uh, four up here in four and then three, you can really get yourself into trouble. So really the last thing that you want to do with your notebook is to uh, 
uh, clear it and run it from beginning to end, okay, you have to be able to show that if you run your notebook uh, from beginning to end, that it will give you reliable answers, okay? Now, I showed you that you could do that by uh, uh, clicking on kernel and saying restart and clear and then coming over to cell and saying run all. Uh, you can do it in a shorter way by clicking on kernel and picking uh, uh, restart and run all. That'll do it uh, too. Okay. And we just did uh, that. Okay. And anytime you, uh, you, you want to see your workbook um, and uh, not see the output, right? You want to begin without the output. Of course, you can go up to uh, the menu and click on uh, a kernel restart and clear output. So that gets rid of the output. These are these are just uh, the documentation and and the code cells. Okay, and you could actually walk through and execute them one at a time. Okay, or again, as I showed you before, you can uh, you click on the menu on uh, cells and say run all. Okay, and that uh, does it. So. Um, we were able to show that it showed that we were able to call a helper and we were able to configure and uh, 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 call uh, what I would call is a proper program. Okay, it's not just a helper uh, function, um, it's a real uh, program. Okay, and um, now are we done? We're kind of done. What we haven't done is we haven't added uh, documentation that sort of explains what these two code cells uh, do. Okay, so let's do that. Let's let's uh, click on uh, the you know the first of the code cells, and um, we want to insert a. Uh, we want to insert a cell above and put some markdown in, into it. So in the menu, we can say insert, insert cell above. Okay. And we can turn this into markdown. Okay. And um, maybe we just want to say, um, let's make this a uh, level two heading. So uh, two, two pound signs. Okay. And let's say, let's call this an example of calling a helper function from a library module. Okay. And we're going to execute that. Okay. And so now that we don't do, we just have the code hanging out there, uh, we've taken advantage of uh, this and you know maybe we need to get the size of our uh, titles a little bit uh, better let's go back up here and let's turn this into a level two uh, title as well and redo okay so those that looks a little better and then let's uh, highlight the second cell I mean you know the second uh, code cell and again, go up and uh, click on insert, insert cell above. Okay. And let's turn that into a markdown cell. Okay. And again, let's make it a level two heading. Okay. Um, we call this uh, an example of, um, an example of, uh, calling a full program like uh, function. Okay. And let's execute that. Okay. And we've made some changes, right? So before we're done, let's just go up and uh, click on the menu on kernel, uh, restart and run all. 
restart and run all cells. And this is it. Okay, so the final version that we have, um, it, uh, it has a title. Uh, we've uh, documented the uh, dependencies. So if we share this with uh, a colleague or the public in general, uh, they will know if they want to run this, uh, what has to be in the virtual environment. Okay, and then for all the code that we have, um, we've uh, documented so it tells a story uh, consistent with the paper that we read. It's not an elaborate story because we're only uh, demonstrating a couple of things. And now we can see how uh, we can f uh, we can see that in the um, in the PyCharm project uh, we have a subdirectory for uh, data, and then um, we can have a uh, we can have a library module or two or three or four or five uh, like this that have just helper functions that we can just uh, use in the code that's uh, in the notebook. And then we can have uh, more typical uh, programs uh, like print and add I I I integers. And um, a couple of things. Uh, one is uh, we typically do not want to execute the main. Okay. Uh, and um, uh, uh, what we want to do is we want to have a second level function that we call and before we call uh, we're going to want to uh, document in the notebook okay uh, how we're going to configure it and then we're going to do the call okay it's going to be that simple all right so um when we get to the uh, tutorials for your weekly assignment, we're going to learn a couple of more things. But I think this is a good introduction to using uh, PyCharm and uh, Jupyter together and how you might do that and maybe some good uh, practices uh, to make sure um, uh, that you're not going to get into trouble uh, down the road. So having said that, I'm going to say bye until next time. Bye bye.